Uh, greetings, geometry students. This is Mr. Heron coming back at you with 2.2. Um, so I wanted to take a moment. I hope 2.1 went well for you. And, and please do what you can to remember those angle relationships um, moving forward because they do play a very, very big part in this unit. So 2.2, two, we talk about slope. And slope is something that you may have heard in algebra days or maybe something that you... you remember from either middle school or, or intermediate algebra whenever you took that and and it's it's merely the the um measuring um basically the steepness of a line i think a lot of students you know they they get into they get so focused on um how to what it is and how to find it, that, that, or how to find it and the different ways of finding it, that they forget what it actually is. So all you're doing is measuring the steepness of a line. So I know most of you would remember that's just merely y minus y over x minus x. Um, sometimes some, some places will just call it change in y, triangles like the symbol for change in, in mathematics. So it's um, change in y over, not change in y, that, that was foolish of me, uh, over change in x. Okay, so that, that's kind of what you're looking for. And, and I think most of you will have seen this in some way, shape, or form at some point along the way. So when we look, let's, let's kind of get a good visual here of what we're trying to do when we talk about slope. Um, a big factor when you're, when you're going skiing is, is the slope of the hill. Um, so most of the time, you know, you, you have your green. I don't have a green. Oh, I have a green. Um, you have, you, when you're gone, if you've ever gone skiing, you know, you know, have your green circles, which, which are easier. Um, you, you have your, uh, sometimes it's a blue square, which is a little more intermediate, a little more difficult. Um, then you have like black diamonds and, and black diamonds are tough or you have a double black diamond and double black diamond is, is for really, really experienced skiers and really, really good skiers. Um, and some of those have, have a slope of 40% or greater. And what does that mean? Well, what that means is that, that it's the slope is, is very, very steep. There, there is a, um, for, for every area forward, there's, there's a very steep drop going down. Okay, so your, your green circles are going to be relatively level. Okay, so they're gonna be not much of a decline. Um, your your blue squares they're they're going to be a little bit more but still not 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 terrible when when you get up to the black diamonds and the double black diamonds you get you get pretty steep uh, you you better be under control and you better know what you're doing otherwise you you could seriously injure yourself so the question asks so if we if we can put this over a grid put this into a coordinate plane how how do I get from A to B well. How do I get from A to B? Well, the first thing you want to remember is that you measure up or down first. Okay, that, that's something that students like to forget, is that you go up or down first. So here, I'm going to go down one, two, three, and I'm going to go over one, two, three, four, five, six. So now I went down three, I went over six. Because I went down, that is going to tell me that that is going to be a negative number. Okay, so down means negative. Okay, so that's a negative slope. So simplified, it would just be merely negative one half. So the way I do that would be I would take the y's and subtract them, and I would take the x's and subtract them. So that, that's going to be what I do there. Okay. That's that's what I do. Um, this don't don't be too caught up in in the numbers at at the bottom. This the y two just basically means like the second y value, okay. And and the y one is like the first y value. They they write it down there kind of as a footnote to to kind of get your attention of which one goes where. So so when I look. Um, remember, you go up or down first. So if I'm going from J to K, um, I can do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to go up 5 units and over 4 units. 
And, and I leave it like this. And this is something that, this is something that, um, I don't know, you're not supposed to do in math. You're not supposed to leave it as an improper fraction. Um, the, you're, you're not, you're supposed to simplify it and you're supposed to tell me, oh, it's one and one fourth. No, for slope, you don't do that. You leave it like that. And, and what I, what I can also do is I can look at this and go, you know what, J is at negative one, negative two. K is at three, three. And, and I can, and I can do the one that was on the previous page. I can do that formula, that Y minus Y over X minus X. So I'd go three minus negative two over three minus negative one, and I would get five over four. So I can do it either way. Likewise over here from L to M, please notice I go down first. So I'm gonna go down one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna go over one, two, three. So this would be like a negative six and a positive three. So my slope is going to be merely negative two. And, and again, you know, L is at negative two, three, and M is at one, negative three. So, so I could do, um, so I could do Y minus Y over X minus X. I can totally do that. Either way would be fine. So here, ooh, here we have a bit of a challenge. So if I just kind of follow my rules, I don't go up or down at all. Okay, I don't go up or down at all. So my, I would go down, zero, up, zero, neither one. So then I go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my slope technically would be zero over seven. Okay, but what, but, but you know, mathematically, let's think about this. What's zero divided by anything? Okay, if you, if you take nothing and divide it by, by seven people, they all get nothing. So this is just a slope of zero, okay? So a slope of zero, just zero. Um, so this becomes, this, this is a, just a horizontal line has a slope of zero, okay? It has a slope of zero. So now if I look at QR, a QR, so if, uh, let's just for argument's sake say I'm going from R to Q. Okay, I'm going to be rising one, two, three, four, five. But but I never I never go right. I never I never go anywhere there. So it's just be zero. Wait wait a moment. I, I I can't do that. That that breaks so many laws in math that it's not possible. You can't divide by zero. That's not possible. So what do we call that? So we call that if you can't divide if you can't divide by zero, we call that undefined. Okay, so a vertical line is just going to be have an undefined slope. Okay, and that's that's all we just say. We just say the slope is undefined. That's it. That's all we say. Okay, these are two special cases. Okay, so a horizontal line, vertical line, and please keep them straight. Horizontal, zero, vertical, undefined. Okay, a lot, of, a lot of students like to switch those, and, and that's kind of, con and that all that does is confuse me, which is not a good idea either. So let's look. So lines B and R are parallel. Okay, parallel. Remember from previous section, they're going to be equidistant apart. They're never going to touch. They're going to be coplanar. So line B passes through this and this. Line R passes through this and this. So let's look at slope. Slope of B. So I will go second y over first y, so it'll be two minus six. Then I will go negative nine minus three. Let's see what that gets me. That will give me negative four on top, negative 12 on the bottom. So that's four over 12, so that's one third. Okay, now let's look at line r. So r, I will go three over four, or three minus four, sorry. What am I doing there? 3 minus 4 over 2 minus 5. So that gives me negative 1 over negative 3. That also gives me 1 third. Interesting. That's not a coincidence. 
and, and this is something that, that you should definitely make note of, parallel lines have the same slope. So that's a big idea. So now let's let's look what happens when when I have okay they say these are perpendicular let's look what happens my slopes here so here I will have negative five minus one over negative one minus one that will be negative six over negative two that will be three okay so now let's look at slope of p so I'll go one minus two over 6 minus 3. What happens there? Well, let's see, I end up with negative 1 over positive 3. Okay, so, so these two aren't the same, okay, that, which is good because that's, that's a parallel thing. Um, but if you'll notice, if I multiply those two, I get an answer of negative 1. Okay, that, that is my clue that the lines are perpendicular. Okay, if the product... Now, product is multiplication. If the product is negative 1, I should say, you know, if it's the slope product is negative 1, lines are perpendicular. So, so take a look at this. If I can multiply them and get negative 1, it's going to be perpendicular. If they're the same, which is quite pretty obvious to see, well, you know, you might have to do a little bit of simplifying, but that's that's you can definitely do that. Then that's going to be parallel. Okay. Now let's look. Okay, two lines have the same slope if and only if they are parallel. Okay, two lines are perpendicular if and only if their slopes are, um, I would say only if their slopes are, the, the term is called negative reciprocals. Okay, and you might have heard the term reciprocal um, before in, in mathematics. And a reciprocal just means flip. I mean, that just means flip it over. That's, that's all it is. And I could go into the long extended mathematical term of it, but um, that's, that's all you're looking at. So if we look here, Um, so if we look here, let's, let's look and see what we got. Okay, so line R passes through this, 7, negative 9, 4, negative 1, 4, 6, 15, negative 4. So if we look at our slope, so we'll look at line R, 1 minus negative 5, negative 9, and then negative 4 minus 7. So let's see, that'll be 1 plus 9, that'll be 10, negative 4 minus 7, that'll be negative 11. Okay, we can't do much with that. Okay, you can't, no simplifying, but that, that's what we got. Um, so if we look at line S, that'll be negative 4 minus 6 over 15 minus 4. So that would be negative 10 over 11. So now, even though the negatives are in this different places, that's, that's still the same thing. That's still the same thing. So those lines are going to be parallel. So just kind of note that, that all I did was figure out the slopes, and then I went by what the slopes told me. So let's look. Take a look here. So if we graph the line, graph the line that contains a point negative 3, 0. So at negative 3, 0, I'm going to make my point. And it's perpendicular to the line that contains the points 2, negative 3, and 2, 0. Okay, so let's look at this one first. Okay, so that would be 0 minus negative 3 over 2 minus negative 2. Okay, so that would be 3 over 4. That's the slope of this line. Okay, I want perpendicular to that line. Okay, remember, that means perpendicular. 
okay? I don't want that one. Many, many students will just take this slope and run with it. No, no, no. You want the perpendicular slope, okay? So what do I need to do? I need to flip and switch the sign. So I want this one. This is my winner right here. So now how do I graph it? Well, I go to the line. I start at negative 3, 0, which I marked. And, and I use my slope. So I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1, 2, 3. And, and there's my line. That's what I want. And, and I can check, you know, does that match up? Well, I went negative 2, negative 3, and 2, 0. Is that can, are those two perpendicular? You know, I could figure it out mathematically, but I'm, I'm, I'll go by the eyeball test in this case. Yeah, that looks pretty perpendicular to me. So the key here is this one right here, making sure that I'm taking the right slope. So please be aware of that. Be, be careful here. Be, be, you know, proceed slowly. Proceed with caution here. So now we switch, change it up a little bit. So now we go to parallel. So I'm going to plot the point 5, 1. That'll be right here. And I'll put it a little darker so you can see it easier. So 5, 1's right here. This, this is my, my point of importance here. So now I want something that is parallel to these two. And, and I could plot the points, you know, negative 2, 4, 2, 1. That's, that's, that's not overly complicated, but I just should realize that that's what I want. Okay, something parallel to that. So I need the slope of this. Okay, I need to take my same slope. Same slope is going to be, um, my same slope is, is going to be what I want. So I want 1 minus 4, okay, y minus y, over x minus x. Okay, so I'm just going to give me negative 3 over positive 4. Okay, now in this case, because it's parallel, I want that exact same slope. So now let's look. Do I go... One, two, three. One, two, three, four. I'm kind of off the graph a little bit, but you can still sketch. Or you can go backwards. You can go back. Uh, go back one, two, three, four, and go up one, two, three. That kind of gives you an idea. There's my there's my line right there, and that looks pretty parallel to me. That looks pretty parallel. We're okay there. So now let's look at why we do slope. Slope. And, and rate of change are, are basically the, they're, they're, they're equivalent. Rate of change is, is used to kind of measure exactly what it sounds like. How fast do things change? Slope is more used for, for graphing purposes. So if we consider rate of change, it's more like an algebraic way of, of using slope. It's saying, how does this rate comp change compared to this rate? So if we, if we kind of look at an example here. So Columbia, South Carolina. 1965 had a population of 8,052. In 2012, it had a population of 131,686. So now, what is the annual rate of change? Annual is a big word there. Okay, annual is a big word. Annual means like yearly, right? Annual means yearly. So if you look, okay, I'm going to almost consider this as like two points. So I'm going to say, you know what? In 1965, it was this. And in 2012, it was the 131,000 and change. Okay, so I'm going to kind of consider that as two points. So when I go to find my rate of change, I'm going to do that. Okay, it almost just becomes a slope problem. So this becomes 1, 2, 3, 6, 3, 4 over 47, which becomes 2630.51. Okay, 26. So I would say it's approximately 2,631 people. Okay, that's your rate of change, about 2,631 people, okay? So and you look, I mean, if you're, if you're counting people, you don't count half a person. That's just not nice. But here's your setup. I want year, population, year, population, and then just do a slope problem. 
So if we can set it up correctly, then we'll be then we'll be in pretty good shape. So in 2013, 500 million songs were legally downloaded uh, from the internet. Lord knows how many were illegally downloaded. Uh, 2011, 2 million songs were legally downloaded. Find the slope and interpret its meaning. So, if, if we consider, so if I go again, in 2013, we had 500 million. Okay, I'm not going to write out all the, all the letter, all the zeros. That's, you don't need to do that. So you're looking at 200 million. Okay, so, so if I look at my slope, so that's 500 minus 200 over 2013 minus 2011. And, and here I just, I considered this to be like X2, Y2. And I consider this one to be X1, Y1. Okay, just because 2011 happened first. Um, so that becomes 300 over two, over 150. So basically is 150. So in, interpret its meaning. What does that mean? That means per year, there was an increase of 150, remember we're talking about million songs downloaded. Okay, so there's an increase of 150 million songs downloaded. We're legally, of course. Right? Legally. So now, that was in, what happens if we get to 2015? Okay, so, so 2015, well, let's look at this. In 2013, it was 500 million. So we know that it's going to be 150 million. So 2014 will be uh, 650. 2015 will be another 150. So that would be all the way up to 800 million. So that would be my answer. Of course, that's a very simple, basic way to figure that out. It's only two years. It's not that difficult. Otherwise, I would just go like 500 plus 150 times however many years they wanted. So go 150 times years, and that, and that would give me my total. Okay? Okay, let's look. So 2000, the annual sales for one manufacturer of camping equipment was... 48.9 million. 2005, total sales was 85.9 million. What would the total sales be in 2015? Okay, so in 2000, we're looking at 48.9 million. 2005, we're looking at 85.9 million. What would it be in 2015? So let's let's figure out our our rate of change, our slope first. So 85.9 minus 48.9 over 2005 minus 2000, and and I put years first because that's that's a little more steady. Okay, years time that's a steady thing that that doesn't change. Um, you know, a year is not 365 days one year, and then like 310 the next year, and then like 450 the year after that. Time is steady. Okay, so that's why it makes for a good um, X value there. So this becomes 37 over 5, which is a little more than 7. So it's going to be 7.4. So that means per year, it's an increase of 7.4 million. Okay, so now they want it in 2015. Okay, so from 2005 to 2015, that's 10 years, right? That's 10 years. So I could say, you know what? In 2005, it was 85.9 million plus my rate of change, which is 7.4 times my year. So that's going to be 10 years. So I'm going to take 85.9 plus 74. And that's going to give me $159.9 million. Okay, this, 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 this just becomes 74. So you just add the two. Nothing too terrible. Okay, but my key here is my setup to figure out my slope. 
Only then can you go back and answer the question, how, how far in 2015? Okay? So I know it's a little bit, you're used to seeing some things in slopes, so now we're taking a step further and, and seeing what you can use it for. Okay, good luck. I look forward to your questions.